as we think about you know uh, creating value and uh, so far at together we have met about 200 uh, gen ai based uh, founder founding teams in the last uh, four months the biggest question that we have that we have been asked is where is the market opportunity we have teams who have been engaging with us saying okay i understand the technology i am able to learn gen ai uh, you know india has uh, 6 million plus professional developers right now so it's pretty obvious that people can learn uh, people are smart so biggest question we got got around is the market opportunity so i'm going to start first talking about how to think about the market opportunity in a gen ai world so traditionally when we look at the markets we looked at market drivers which use case how big the market is so that still stands true but now we have one more element coming in so that's how this framework works so first point in this framework as you can see on the slide is you know what we call ai first markets the markets which were not possible before these are essentially at a fundamental level the markets where tons of manual work is now getting automated using gen ai for example in healthcare we have a portfolio company in stealth mode which is automating the entire rcm space starting with medical coding uh, and how they are integrating with the workflows so medical coding is a very cumbersome task so after a patient visits the hospital hospital has to sift through hundreds and thousands of medical code to be able to talk to insurance companies and figure out how much will insurance company pay for it so all that now can move a part of it a large part of it can be done by gen ai so therefore there is a value creation happening there legal i'm sure is one of the most popular use cases right now there are probably now 50 plus startups in legal but legal workflows in the era before gen ai was primarily focused on you know workflow of lawyers but the majority of the work on reading the previous cases finding the references was manual second contract drafting i'm sure a lot of you have gone through term sheets uh, legal contracts in your companies they all done manually so now using gen ai for example what harvey.ai is doing or even up is doing you can now gen ai can create contract draft templates automatically because it has the historical context it understands for a particular type of contract what is required similarly all old case laws can be summarized and can be given to the lawyer in a much more faster fashion using interactive user interface which we just talked about in the first half of the presentation illustration the most popular with all of us right previously we used to look for a designer to find an image or we'll use getty or use such sources images that we want to use but now we have text to image text to video they're all a possibility now and you can build workflows on top of it education as you know india needs many many more qualified teachers and uh, personalized education has shown the promise but it's very expensive so now uh, generative ai can come and totally change the world where personalized education can be given to students as a help you will still need teachers but ai can make personalization at a mass level so those are all ai first examples there are many more which are in the works right now and i think many more are going to come the second point on that actually is the uh, existing markets i think in the past now india has about 3500 saas companies all of us looked at either industries or functions sales and marketing automation supply chain uh, risk management and many much such functions and okay said let's pick a use case and build a company around that use case it not a winner, it's not a winner takes all market so i am able to get some revenue but now when you're launching into a market you have to clearly understand or very carefully study where the opportunity in that function or a vertical or industry exist i'll give you an example all of us are writing apis now as cloud went into growth and maturity phase more and more apis are being written so that softwares can talk to each other api documentation is cumbersome you know then integrating and customizing api to your specific use case is even more cumbersome and tedious i would say it was all manual you know we've invested in a stealth mode company which is now automating this entire uh, api consumption of documentation and generating api automatically so that's going to reduce a lot of time so therefore you can it's a niche within the entire integration space which can be exploited i'm sure more competition will come but that's an area where you able to take one piece and able to compete with existing companies marketing automation you know it's one of the most popular areas from india because it's easily understandable it is now possible to generate personalized coupons and offer to end users and distribute them via conversational interface this is different from how it is implemented today inside the applications for example when you are in the swiggy swiggy is pushing the coupons to you but instead of that that we have a company called work hack which can now automate based on the user intent and emotions it can engage the user and can therefore 
present the opportunity to buy a, a particular product at the time based on the emotions or the intentions. So they've put different, different use cases, but, but a good wish to get in and start building a marketing automation company on top of it. And then you can expand the use case. Third is, you know, niche markets that are large enough to grow. So privacy, you know, privacy has been an area which has been very important as cloud grew with more than 6 billion people on the internet. Privacy and data concern are a topic for governments and the topic for enterprises. But as AI models interact with data, concerns about data privacy and data security are increasing and will continue to increase. You know, we have people to handle, to handle the PHI data, the personal data, and, you know, we have to find a way of how it has to be fed into the model. So there's an opportunity where you can create a company there. For example, uh, we have just invested in a company, we in a stealth mode, which can really help you solve the problem for enterprises where they can keep the data anonymized, still you can use the foundation model to build their services and offering them. Similarly, another niche area is automating due diligence. You know, a lot of people on the call are startups, they have gone through DD process. It's very cumbersome. There are hundreds of documents, lawyers, uh, uh, financial accountants involved. So now JNA can read those documents, can summarize, and can create a very context-specific DD report. Uh, obviously, humans will be required, and there are regulatory uh, requirements for that. But again, a very niche use case. Similarly, there are some really, really boring areas in CF office space, in logistics. Uh, for example, when you are shipping goods, you know, physical movement is required, but entire interaction automation around that from, you know, uh, from a ship to truck, to rail, to barge, to last mile, there are many opportunities there where you can create a niche company and can also grow. And the final one is the, the infrastructure. As you can see, infrastructure, uh, it requires a lot of money, but I think India still has a chance. You know, you saw uh, in Europe, they launched Mistral.ai, which is launching open source foundation model for European markets and for Europe. I think a lot of governments are looking at how to keep the data in their own countries. So I think there'll be opportunity for people who are based in India to look at India-specific, Indian language-specific foundation model. Of course, you need to find data, you need to train data, so it's going to be expensive. But I'm sure some of you will crack that. And why not even think about, you know, at a fundamental level, designing GPU or a, or a chip, which can therefore compete with NVIDIA or companies like that. AI Wave is just starting. So I think there will still a lot of infrastructure-led play. Yes, of course, first round is with the incumbents, but still there'll be a lot of opportunity which is to be taken. So that's the framework that we have thought through. It's very early stages. You know, we've also been grappling internally and thinking very deep on how to think about market. So this is how, just to summarize, Think of spaces which are AI first, which has not been possible before, mostly manual in nature, and now part of it or full or large part of it can now be automated. Look at the spaces where existing incumbents are there and where you can carve your space. Look at some boring niche markets uh, where you can carve the space and finally the infrastructure. So that's how we look at uh, markets. I'm sure you will have a lot of questions around it. Please continue to post your question in Q&A. We will take that after this session. Now, after you have identified the market, I think the biggest thing, which has always been important, even in a traditional SaaS, uh, is the differentiation or the moat. So I think the way I think about moat is again in four fundamental points. One is, is data your moat? I'm going to talk about it in the next slide in more detail. Moving forward, do I have my own foundational model is the second point. Uh, can I create an offering which can create network effects? And finally, is a first mobile advantage. Let me talk about first data as a moat. So if you look on the slide, that is where I think Grish talk about first take out of pokers. I talk about first round of boxing. I think that is clearly the incumbents has advantage because they have millions and billions of data points which they can train their foundation model on and therefore incorporate in their offerings. You know, Microsoft has done it. Google is trying to do that. Adobe has done it beautifully. Notion has done that. Salesforce just launched their all integrated offering, including, you know, Slack, Tableau, their core CRM and so on and so forth. Freshworks just launched uh, their offering, as you heard, Greece talking about it. So I think that is where the data becomes a mode. But for startups, you know, though it is difficult, but you can come up with an offering where you can generate your own data and that starts becoming a mode. Uh, for example, healthcare is a, is a great area where you can start generating more and more data. And as customers interact with you or users interact with you, all the data becomes your mode. Similarly, if you're in lead generation space, if you are in a particular area, I think therefore more vertical you think about, possibility of understanding the, the data and therefore create a moat around it will be a good possibility. Moving on, I think the network effects, I'm sure a lot of you are developers, a lot of you already use Hugging Face. 
I think Hug Hugging Face is my favorite example where they have a developer base. Developers then launch their models on open source. And therefore, as more developers adopted, more people feel like launching their open source model on, on Hugging Face. So therefore, that's the leading library for open source foundation model. So that, that's where network effect uh, kicks in. Uh, OpenAI did the same thing. In two months, it touched 100 million users. Now, as more users use chat GPT, more data is being consumed. Uh, the foundation model get better and better and therefore the whole uh, chat GPT experience become better and better uh, for the end user and more accuracy will come, health solution will reduce. So I think that is where network effects really come. Third, own foundation model. It's a bit hard. I think you have to think a bit more fundamentally, think about which area the foundation model has to be built. Jasper.ai, obviously one of the early movers and have great uh, example where a lot of people are using, I'm sure, copy.ai, jasper.ai, where they started by horizontal use case of how do you summarize the content and therefore help in copywriting or content. But more importantly, as they found more data, they're able to build foundation model, which then now becomes their mode, which is the first point I said. Similarly, Adept, you know, deep technical team, they are they have an audacious goal of making the use of application that we use using RPA concept, but use Gen AI for that and automate your interaction with the apps. So for example, if you simply say, open the lead, it'll understand, it'll go and open the Salesforce and, and therefore it'll help you generate more productivity. Similarly, the other example, inflection.ai, mid-journey, they're all examples where they have built the foundational model, but it requires uh, technical power and also data to, to build your deep foundational model and compute power to do that. And the final is first mover, which is traditional. I think first mover still has some advantage, if not, not all the advantage. Harvey.ai, for example, they launch a little bit more horizontal offering for legal uh, automating the legal uh, manual tasks. And they have built a good first mover advantage where there are more users, more user uh, contract templates using Harvey AI, more it learn. So therefore, network effect comes in. So they, they have data. So therefore, when you combine these four points of mode, I think which layer you play in, how do you use your data, how do you build your foundation model really, really becomes your mode. But that is something I, we would focus a lot on and I would really encourage the, the startups and the founders to focus a lot on where the mode is going to be. So as you have now thought about market, build your mode. I think uh, the big question is on the team composition. Of course, you know, for every uh, successful startup or a company, the team has to be balanced. There has to be CTO, CEO, somebody who understands product, somebody who understands GTM. But now, therefore, what is different in the Gen AI era? Difference in Gen AI era is that you have to have a founder who have deep or deeper technical expertise, have access to AI, understanding your AI networks. If you're building a foundation model company, you have to have a you know data science engineer, an ML engineer. So I think based on how do you think about your mode, your team composition will change a lot. But having somebody on AI is going to be important uh, as you build your companies. India has 6 million developers. I think a lot of them will learn it very fast and will be available in this area. So team composition is also going to make a make huge amount of difference as you build your companies. So therefore, to summarize, you know, a lot of times people ask us the question that, okay, I'm a really good technical engineer. I can really build the product, whichever I focus on. I would love to engage with together on understanding which market should I go off. So this is just a high level understanding of also how we look at the companies. You know, if you're a founder who is just having an idea or just understand technology really well, won't look for an idea, we're happy to engage with you. So look at markets. We do continuous research. Uh, Grish mentioned about modern data stack. We have our own thesis on that, thesis on healthcare and many more areas. We're happy to share that with you and engage with you as you think about building your companies. We're happy to brainstorm with you how in a fast evolving Gen AI world, the modes are changing, new thought processes coming. And of course, if you need help in building the team, looking for a co-founder, we're happy to help you. So these are the areas, that's how the context we look at. We're happy to engage with you more and more uh, as we all together start taking on Gen AI and build global companies uh, from India. Happy to take uh, a question answer. I know it's a lot of content to consume. 